Okay, yes, as Johan already said, this is a, a work that has been done in collaboration with the Spanish National Library and, uh, and in particular with a great development realized by Daniel Villasuero, who is now in, in Madrid, continuing with the developments. So the motivation of, uh, so I will start this talk with a uh, motivation and uh, making clear how to deal with other kind of metadata that are related with uh, language, provenance, and license, which are extremely useful for when trying to use library uh, linked metadata in final application. I will also review the, the linked data process followed with examples of, from the Spanish National Library. And at the end, I will highlight some uses of the library link, linked metadata in, the, in other fields and how library metadata can be integrated, can be reused with linked data coming from the geographical and uh, education domain. So we live at this moment in a world of digital data. So we have many providers, city halls, uh, governments, devices, also people generating metadata, and a uh, lot of data being generated in, in social media. And uh, this metadata is available, and this data in different domains, governmental, energy, library, geography, and also it appears in, in different formats. It is not only the MAR21 records that you are used to work with, but also we have data in formats, databases, uh, geographical data, in a special format given by census, and, and, and also in, in linked data. And the most important part is that the data is language oriented in the sense that we are generating thousands of linked data, data sets in the cloud or for other purposes and, and uh, in many of the languages and not all the data that we have is open. At some time we need to work with, with closed data. So, so we live uh, in an ecosystem of open uh, or, or of resources already in different silos that belongs to different complementary domains that are in different formats, in different languages, and stored in, meta in repositories with different metadata. And of course, the life of this program is really hard when trying to use many API and, and services for querying the, the metadata available. So, the, so, so, so at the end, the data and the metadata and the data sources that we are using are complementary, but at some point, they are not connected. So the, the good things of linked data is that it allows the uniform access to the data that has been transformed into, into RDF. When, when working application with based on linked data, we need to agree on vocabularies for describing the, the metadata and also the domain, the domain data. We have a, a, a language, a standardized language proposed by W3C RDFs for, 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 for writing down the models and also RDF for, 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 for the data. We have a Sparkle as a standardized query language, and we have many standardized non proprietary APIs for using the, the data that has been made available. But the power of linked data, you already know, is the, is, is the, the links that we have with, with other resources. And these links could be to data in the same language or data that appear in, in different languages. But for the end user that is trying to use the, the, the data in the linked data format, quality is something very, very important. And, uh, and before starting using the data sets that are available, there are many questions related with who generated the data set, how the data set uh, was transformed, when the data set was created in order to see if it, it is providing updated data, is that the last version of the data set? Which one is the license of the data set? Is the license clearly stated in the, in the data set, in some graphs, in some triples? In which format the data are delivered and if data are monolingual or, or, or multilingual? So, so at the end, in order to, to, to discover the quality of a particular data set, the, the metadata really matters. I mean, metadata, metadata matters because, because metadata about data could express 
provenance information, could express license information, could express language information, privacy, if, the, if we are dealing with data related to, with, to people, and of course there are other type of data related, metadata related with geolocation, spatial and time that need also to be, to be represented. So mainly in this talk what I'm going to present in the first part is how to represent metadata related with language, met provenance and, and licenses and how this metadata could be used later on for developing some kind of applications or in some use cases. So uh, as, as Johan mentioned before, I mean, I'm, I'm coordinating a project named LEADER, which is about linguistic link data. And, uh, and uh, we already know that uh, link data is multilingual. And we know that the libraries store multilingual data. So, so let's say if you go to VIA, uh, you can see here Miguel de Cervantes uh, Saavedra, one of the famous writers from Spanish literature in, in many different languages. If we go to the Spanish National Library, we also have some variants for representing Miguel de Cervantes in different languages. In that case, you can see that we, we are not saying in which language is the, each, each variant. In, in the case of BF, it appears because of the flags. And in the French National Library, if we, we can take Don Quixote, which is one of the famous books written by Cervantes, and there we can see the translation of Don Quixote into, into different languages for French, and, and Spanish, it is, says, it is said the, the, the language, for, but for the other uh, uh, titles, we need to discover which one is the, is the language. And of course, we have also the um, resources like the Wikipedia, which are providing links from uh, other data sets where we can find information about Miguel de Cervantes in, in different languages. Okay. So when we are talking about linguistic link data, so, so this is an, these are examples that show that we really need to, to deal with, with, with language. So, when we, so, so several years ago, two years ago, with, we, three years ago, we started to think about how to represent language information in, in link data and how linguistic information could help in order to, to, to deal with, with language. So we came into this idea of the linguistic link data cloud Three years ago, it was a dream. Now it is a, reali it is a reality because we have m more than 150 resources on the Linguistic Link Data Cloud. And the Linguistic Link Data Cloud is a subset of the Link Open Data Cloud. Just focus on the linguistic domain uh, with many type of resources because there we can find corpora, terminological databases, linguistic data categories, uh, typological databases, lexicons and, and, and also uh, bilingual dictionaries or monolingual dictionaries. So in this linguistic link data cloud, language resources are connected and are connected with, uh, with other language resources. And this is very important because linguistic link, da link data will allow or is allowing at this moment the interconnection of uh, words and inform linguistic information that appear in different languages and also it enables the lexicalization of data on the web. And uh, that could be in the link data format or that could be in, the, in, other, in other formats. And it, it can also help with the multilingual, with the multilingual search. And so, so let's say, so, so the linguistic link data could help to translate the same term, a book title, an author name, a place in different languages and could also help to deal with, with acronyms. And you will see later on how we, we have used this linguistic link data uh, for, mm, I mean, for building the Spanish National Library a portal. So at the, this is uh, the core of the linguistic link open data cloud. There are resources like DVpedia. We also have resources like Babelnet. We also have resources like Lesinfo. So there, this part of the cloud is full of the Apertium dictionaries, just translating uh, or representing in RDF uh, dictionaries that are between Spanish and French, Spanish and English, Catalan, and, uh, and uh, Italian, and so on and so forth. 
So what is BubbleNet? BubbleNet is, was built by, by Roberto Naviglia, the Sapienza University, and it is a multilingual lexicon that has been built by merging resources of different kinds. So BubbleNet has been used using WordNet, Wikipedia, Wikidata, OmegaWiki, and so on and so forth. So the same concept and the same entity in BubbleNet is expressed in tens of languages. So, so, so right now, version 3.5 of BubbleNet already has covered 272 languages and more than 14 million entries. So 6 million concepts and 7.7 .7 name entities, uh, and you can see there are also 1 million images, textual definitions, and so on and so forth. So the first thing, the best thing to see how BubbleNet works is just going into, into BubbleNet. So if we go to, to BubbleNet, we can see that, that uh, from Miguel de Cervantes, for instance, I, I, I could get mm, translation from Miguel de Cervantes Saavedra in all these languages. Okay? So, so they, this, this, this resource already exists. And we can find in this resource information about Miguel de Cervantes, which is, Miguel is an author, uh, a mm. Spanish writer, this is, he's a man, uh, he's, he's, he was Spanish, and uh, the, the main works were Don Quixote de la Mancha, for instance. We can also see some images about Miguel de Cervantes, and the most important part now is that we can get information about Miguel de Cervantes in, you can see how many languages, okay? So, so, and how many languages, and also knowing in which language is each translation. So, going back to the, to the presentation, so in the linguistic linked license data, so we are talking about lexicons like BubbleNet, okay, corpora, monolingual, bilingual dictionaries. We are representing this information in, in RDF, using a model named LEMON that has been proposed by the uh, W3C uh, consortium. And LEMON is for representing lexicons. And also, we are proposing using NIF, the, the, the NLP interchange format for representing uh, corpora. A, a license is important because some resources could be opened and some resources could be closed. <laughs> and we have also the open digital right language also proposed or being proposed by the W3C for representing license information in a machine-readable way. So how do we represent this link data, which is behind BubbleNet and other resources? So, so the first thing, or the easiest thing, is that to represent uh, in the traditional way using the annotation properties in, in RDF. So in that particular case, if I, if I take um, the, the identifier of Miguel de Cervantes at the, v, at the Spanish National Library, the labels in different languages could be represented in, in this way. But if I want to use richer models to represent the linguistic I information for more demanding applications, like, let's say, for instance, natural language generation, I, could, I need to use a lemon. And uh, because uh, Miguel de Cervantes is an author and is the author of Don Quixote, in that case, what we are representing in this RDF is uh, the, the property author of, and uh, you can see that the, the property, property author of has two lexicalization, two written representation in Spanish. One uh, is author de in the, ca in the case of the masculine, or in the case of feminine, uh, we could say is author of. So let's say, although the, the, the relation between the author and the, and, and the work is, is author of, I mean, if I'm trying to use this property for other issues in the Spanish, I need to, do, I need to deal with, with the gender. So in that case, the linguistic link data and the knowledge represented in LEMON could help us to represent this information. But, but also, LEMON can help us to, to represent translations in the sense that, that if I have, for instance, a lexicon in Russian and uh, the form of Miguel de Cervantes in Russian is in this way, and I have also the lexicon in Spanish and the written representation for Miguel de Cervantes is in this way, I could link, let's say, these translations in, in Lemon uh, using some basic extensions that has been done and built in, in LIDER and also consensuated at W3C. 
Okay, so, so, so let's say we, we can go beyond the annotation properties and, and labels uh, and we can use more complex models if we want to prepare our linked data application for other type of purposes and to make then uh, at some point uh, multilingual. The other important part is that we also need to add uh, language information to the data set description. I mean, if we don't say either in void or decat, uh, in which language is the data set, a program need to discover the, the language. And this is not difficult, and it is a matter of introducing this RDF, in the, these links into, into, into the data set description. So at the end, what we have is that we have the, the cloud, the, the normal cloud, the open data cloud, and we also have the linguistic cloud. And, uh, and as you can see in this slide, the, we, we are dealing again with vocabularies, domain vocabularies for the link open data cloud, uh, lemon, ontolex, NIF for the linguistic link data cloud. But, we, but, but the, the, the crucial thing is that, and the important thing is that we have the same language because everything is represented in, in, in RDF and RDFS. We have also the same um, query language, Sparkle, and we have also standardized non-proprietary APIs for dealing with the, the domain data and also with the linguistic data. And of course, linguistic link data and link data is linked with other resources. So let's go. Now to the Spanish National mm, to, this, to the Spanish National Library portal, and uh, let's work with Miguel de Cervantes in and what the, the portal is provided. Everything at this moment is in Spanish, so you can feel uh, the multilinguality <laughs> issues that many non-English speakers we deal when we, we we sometimes. Okay, so 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 we are collecting information from Wikipedia. We are presenting the the books. The, the works from Miguel de Cervantes according to their importance. So the first one is Don Quixote de la Mancha and the second one is Novelas Ejemplares. So an image means that we, we click there, we can retrieve the, the PDF for, of, of, this, of this book. And we also have the works where, uh, about Miguel de Cervantes, okay? But let's go into this part. So this, in this information, we can, uh, we can get the information of Miguel de Cervantes in different, in different uh, languages. So now I, I could sh search in, in Arabic. And, and now I would retrieve information about the Miguel de, de Cervantes. So at this moment, the search is prepared in order to allow the, I mean, I mean, different visitors to deal with, with I mean, to, to query in their own language. So, so now, of course, I mean, I, I don't, in order to get the books, so we need, this needs more, more improvement. We are working on that. But let's say now if we go into Miguel de Cervantes uh, Saavedra, and uh, we will see, and, I, we, and we will make a, a query So I will make a query about Don Quixote de la Mancha in order to show you how we have done, I mean, how to use it, how to use it. So I don't know if this is a matter of the library or there are many people now trying to get connected to the Spanish National Library through internet, but please, I would appreciate if you don't use internet because otherwise we, I, I will take some time in, in, in the presentation. So, so now I can, I can retrieve the Spanish one, one of the Spanish book, or I, I could retrieve uh, the, the, the books in, in, in German. It is quicker, you can believe me. Okay. And now uh, I can retrieve, you, you can see all the books that the Spanish National Library has written in German about Don Quixote de la, de la Mancha. I will click in this one that provides the digitalization. I need to go to the, to the digital library. And now, in two or three clicks, you can see immediately that you can start reading Don Quixote de la Mancha in, in, in German. Okay? And this is thanks 
to these kind of language uh, features that, um, that Daniel Villa has implemented in a very efficient way. Okay, so, so now we, we, we can expand the information. If we have language information on the metadata, we can expand the information based on, on language. So let's see, if we go to Avelnet, you, you can see several translations for, for, for La Cité Antique, and uh, we can see uh, the Cité Antique is multi, the, the ancient city. Okay, so we can get several translations that are not available in, uh, in the French National Library or in, in the Spanish National Library. And with this information from Babelnet, we can get extra information about the, the author of, uh, of this book. In, in, in the, so, so we can go to the Wikipedia and to search about the, the author. If I go to the Spanish National Library, uh, just looking for Ciudades an Antiguas, which is all there, we can see here that we retrieve a book, uh, La Cité Antique, which is in, in French. Okay? And then we can go to the French National Library, and from there we can retrieve the, digital, uh, the digitalized resource, and then we could start reading in French, because this book is not digitalized in the Spanish National Library. Okay? So by, by using Babelnet, I can... Uh, I can also retrieve information in, in, other, in other languages. So, so at the end, we are moving forward towards a multilingual content aggregation of scenario where data and metadata coming from, from uh, different sites can be integrated. So at this moment, we have this multilingual uh, information, which is complementary, but, but we, 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 don't, we are not providing the services. So just by, by including the, the, the language information in, the, in, the, in different data sets, I mean, we are closer to this kind of application and, and aggregation. So the linguistic link data also helps with alternative names and, and titles. So for instance, if, I go to the, if we go to the Spanish National Library and we looked for United, United Nation, Nations, uh, you can see that the first book that we retrieve is the Naciones Unidas, which is, uh, so, 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 so the entity, the first entity is Naciones Unidas because this is the way that we name it in, in Spanish and also because the Spanish National Library has many books about uh, Naciones Unidas. And there we can see more information and you can see in the fifth position we get, or in the, the fourth and, and fifth position we get uh, the un uh, United Nations book and books. If we, if we make the query based on an acronym, which is ONU in Spanish, ONU is the acronym for Organización de Naciones Unidas, which is the, the name in the, in the Spanish, then we can, retrieve enti uh, we, we can retrieve information about Naciones Unidas, about the entity, or, or we could get books related with, with, the, with the United Nations. And why is that? Because we have again behind some kind of uh, linguistic data. So there we are expressing in, in RDF and in LEMON again uh, the, the, the acronym UN is an acronym. It has a canonical form, and, but the labels are UN, ONU in, in, in Spanish. And this canonical form it has a written representation which are these two. In the same way, I could say that I have the United Nations, which is a multi-word expression has a canonical form, has an abbreviation, which is UN, and also has a label, which is United Nations in, in English. And in this canonical form, I represented the United Nations in English and Spanish, and I could add many other languages. So, so, so you can see that I'm using the, in that case, lemon for representing this, this information. So thanks to this code, we can retrieve the, um, and we can query with alternative names also and, and, and titles. So the, the, let's go now to move into, into provenance. So provenance is really important in order to provide metadata information about when the resource was created, how the resource wo was created, and so on and so forth. So we have some, some standards proposed by W3C, which is PROVO, in order to represent the process-centric provenance. So let's say in that case, if, uh, if I have um, uh, a particular file, and uh, I could go that code could go 
through some process, then I can generate uh, a new file, let's say version one of this, of this file. And we also have the resource provenance in order to, to, to include the description, the creator, the creation date, the rights of a particular file, file, and we have there the Provo, Premise, the European Data Model, Dublin Core, and so on and so forth. And we also have metadata provenance, which is provenance about the provenance already introduced by, by W3C. So, so let's see with this with, with an example. So in, the, if in that particular case, uh, I'm representing the March 21 data set of the Spanish National Library uh, that belongs to the, the Spanish National Library, which is, has, that has been defined as an agent in the Provo ontology. I also have the creation date and, and the, 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 the creation date and time, and also we have the license. I also have information about the conversion process, when it started, when ended, and which tools or software were used in the transformation process. So in that case, just because we are transforming Mark 21 records into RDFS using, using Marimba, which is a tool developed by, by Daniel Villasuero. So in that particular case, so I, I am writing that the, 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 the conversion process was done using Marimba, which is an agent, which is again an agent in the Provo, in the Provo ontology. And, and also I have the, the license for, for, for this data set. And of course we have at the end the metadata provenance saying that all this process is attributed to the, the Spanish National Library. Okay? So now, if I represent in RDF, I can also query in a Sparkle the provenance information. So another important part is that the, the license information. I mean, let's say the, the in, in Lean Data, I mean, not all the data is open. We can also deal with closed data, and even though we can combine uh, open data and closed data. And if we want to combine open data and closed data, we need to, to have the license information also written in, in, in RDF, okay? If we make ourselves the query, how open is the link open data cloud, uh, we will be surprised because in the open link data cloud, all these nodes in, in white means that, that the license is not specified. Okay, so authors forgot to write about the license. And, and also in the link open data cloud, we can see some bubbles in, in, in orange and red, which means that the data set has some asset restrictions or that the data set is, is closed. So, so as you can see, so the majority of the link open data cloud doesn't specify the license or some data sets, sets appear with a closed license, which is surprising. So how can we represent the license information? So if we represent the license information in, inside the web page, this can, this can be understood and read by, by humans. But if we want machines to, to, to use and to process the license information, we need to represent this license in uh, ODRL, in that case, the Open Digital Rights Language. And there we can express uh, who can, cannot, must, at, what, which resource, and how. Okay, so this is a model, this is an ontology for representing again, the license information. So we can provide and describe licenses for vocabularies, for ontologies, and we can also provide licenses for, for data sets. So, so we have licenses, or we can represent in RDF CC0. We can also represent in RDF that uh, closed data, which is published but has not open license, we can also represent linked private data. This is linked data that we have, but we don't advertise and make published to the community. And we can find many, many, many data sets with, uh, without the explicit license. And this is a real nightmare because we can see, but we cannot, we cannot use. So just because of that, in, in the framework of one Spanish project, and this work is being developed by, by Victor, Victor Rodriguez, with Don Tell, which is a postdoc, in, in our group, we, we, we are working with RDF licensing support. So we have the data model based on our ODRL. We, are, we have a data set uh, 
called RDF license, where we have this description of licenses in RDF, and we have services like licenses for dealing uh, or analyzing compatibility between different types of licenses. And also we have tools that allow conditional access to tooling data. So when we are representing the, the, the license information in ODRL, uh, we, we can say or we can uh, state, for instance, that the license is defined for the whole data set, for a particular graph, for an ontology, for a class, for a triple, or even though for, for, for a mapping. And there are some actions that people can do or cannot do. They can derive, translate, distribute, print, and so on and so forth. Uh, there are uh, some parties, uh, people that could, that could allow to do the, the action, like, for instance, we, we could say one individual or that the, the, the license is, is for a particular or organization. And we can also explain some constraints uh, saying that you can use if you attribute or you can use if you live in a particular city or you can use in a particular time frame. So in this RDF license data set, we have already uh, represented 100, almost 150 licenses. Uh, they have permanent URIs, so I really recommend you to point to this data set and, uh, and uh, in order to, to express in, in RDF uh, the, the, the license. And if you want to read more, I mean, there is a paper over there that you can read. And, and of course, we will be glad to help with this, with this topic. So let's see. So if, if we want to represent, represent a Creative Commons uh, license, in that case, uh, a license that has no party and no constraint, this would be the code, the, the RDF code for, for that. So this is the permanent URI for, for, for the license. And there you can see the, the permissions of distribution, derivative works, and reproduction. Uh, all, uh, and it is constrained to the duty of making clear the, the, the attribution, for instance. So how do I use this license in my data set? It's very simple. The only thing you have to write is uh, my data set, license, and in that case, to include the URI of the, the license, okay? So I, I can be and I can make more complex things in the sense that uh, the reproduction of a data set is limited until the end of the year after paying 15 euros. So there I have my data set. I give permission to reproduce only if you pay, I pay 15 euros. And there at the end you can see the constraint until the end of the, the year. So I can also uh, express licenses for classes and, and concepts. And uh, this can open new business models for, for, for the use of library link data. So I could say, okay, all books are offered for free, new books will be sold for five euros. So, so in, that, in that case, uh, you can see that for, for the, 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 the class or book, every, I can do any kind of action uh, and reproduce and also, but however, for the new books, I can do the action only if I pay the five, the five euros. And also I can express more complex uh, question, licenses, like you can pay the whole 15 euros for the, the whole data set, or I can pay 0 0.01 euro, for instance, if I want to get that trip. Okay? So the granularity, the level of granularity and detail with ODRL uh, is, is really impressive if, if we are using these, these ontologies or this model that we have already built. So at the end, what we have again is that we have the cloud, we have the linguistic cloud, we have the licenses represented in, in, in RDF. So everything is in, in RDF, everything is in queries could be in a Sparkle, open APIs and non-proprietary APIs, and also linking this information with, with other parts. So, okay. so now I will forget now about, I will go back now to the second part of the talk, which is the process being followed for, for uh, for generating library link data, and I will take uh, examples from the from data from the Spanish National Library. So there is a, a, a journal paper which is already there that you can read if you want to see more more details. The the, the first thing to say is that uh, the ontology engineering group and the Spanish National Library is a team a team working uh, composed by by cataloging services, 
people working in cataloging services in the digital library and, uh, and researchers working in the ontology engineering group. So, so thanks to, to, to the excellent collaboration between these two institutions, we have this Spanish National Library portal. The, the methodology that we have followed is the classical one in building linked data applications, specification, modeling, RDF generation, data linking, publication and exploitation. And uh, data curation is mainly, mainly done at the beginning during the specification modeling and, and, and RDF generation. This is an experience from other domains where uh, the process of linking data helps to improve the quality of the data in the, in the, in the, original, in the original source. So when, when j just some, some data about the, the, the Spanish National Library uh, data sets. So the records were in March 21 format. We had 4.5 million bibliographical records, 4.5 million authority records, and this was the version, the last version we, we took in, in September 2015. So, as I said before, the, we wanted to have the, the, the team from the Spanish National Library on board, the catalogers from the very beginning, Ricardo, Ana, Mar, and, and also uh, we wanted to make the, the, we wanted to include the, the multilingual aspect from the very beginning, and we started in the first round the collaboration with, with IBLA. So, so, so there in this slide you can see the, that everything has been transformed into, into RDF using Marimba, and Marimba also links with other uh, library data uh, sources and also with uh, DVpedia. So for, for modeling the, the ontology in the Spanish National Library, uh, we, we have done it in two phases. In the first phase, we reuse the URIs from the from standard vocabularies, mainly IFLA, FIVER, FRAT, and now, in the second version of the, the ontology portal, we integrated, uh, we, we, we built an, an ontology, which is the BNE uh, ontology, and uh, that reuse and links the terminologies from, the, from, the, from other resources. Why, why, why did we, we build this ontology? Because we, we wanted to provide uh, stability in the use of the, the ontology under the datos.bne domain. The, the second is that we can document the, the ontology in a central document. We can enrich and provide new properties and, and, rela and, and relationships. For, for instance, those that are related with the Spanish legal deposit, uh, uh, we, can, uh, we can have the control over the description and, uh, and, and labels, in particular for, for visualization. Mm -hmm. We could deal with all these multilingual aspects because the, the, the ontology is described in English and, and Spanish and also to allow content negotiation uh, for, to, to be used by different type of, of API. So if you want to go to the and to, to, to see the ontology, it is available under this domain. So this was the first version of the, the, the ontology where we reuse many classes from, from Fever. So now we have the, the ontology, which is, you can see it is the same, but just persisted in the, in, the, in the Spanish National Library, at least in this high-level view. So it, in order to promote and to explode um, alternatives for, for names and, and, tat, and titles, so what we have done is um, in, in, to, to deal with indexing alternatives, mainly related with acronyms and, and, and translations. So for instance, for person, we have the authority name and we also have the variant names for, for work. We have the, the, the authority title and the variant titles. And for organization, we have the authority name and the variant names. So this is dealt with, as, as I, some of these things are dealt, as I mentioned before. For the, uh, so, so, so you can imagine, so the power of, of the, the, the power of the ontology is later on uh, transfer into the, the, the user interface because the user interface is, is using many of the relationships that we have in, in, the, in, the, in the ontology. So this, the third step is the generation of, uh, of the, the mappings or so, so the, the, the generation in, in RDF. So from these uh, Mark 21 records, we need to, to, to establish how these Mark 21 records will be transformed into the, 
the ontologies that, that a particular author is a, is a person and, and for that uh, our friends from the Spanish National Library built the, the, the mapping and then Marimba processed the mapping and generated the, the RDF code, instantiated the, 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 the ontology. For the links, we identify where were the, which one were the data, uh, the data to be linked with. And uh, possibly you have already seen this slide many, many times. So we created um, many same as links with the other libraries. It should be good if at some point all the libraries start linking together and reversing the, the same as links. And for publication, we have used, this is something new, we have combined the CAT and, and BOID in order to include license information, provenance information with Provo, language information using uh, LESGO and also allowing uh, three access mechanisms, in particular a sparkling point and, and data dumps. So the data, uh, that VNE, that S is a, is, is a catalog and it is composed of seven data sets with uh, different distributions and, uh, and you can see also the, the profile in this, in this URL. So, so the, here you can see the information, uh, the DCAT graph with information about the seven data sets, uh, the catalog, distribution and so on. So let's go. So in, in this part, you can see that this is the way that we have been using for representing the license information. So there uh, we, we, will have a, we, we have a link to the RDF. Uh, we already have a link to the RDF license data set. Uh, we also have the description in, the, in one, almost 200 uh, language using uh, Lesbo. We define the BNE as a publisher in the catalog as an agent. So if we click in the, in the BNE, we, we, we go into the web page of the uh, Datos BNE with, that describe the Biblioteca Nacional de España with different books and works and so on and so forth. And, and also you can see here that the, the, the catalog contains seven uh, data sets. And uh, this allows us also to, to help a lot in the, in the, when building the, the new interface because now we can uh, provide better access if people are looking for people, entity, works and, and, and things. Okay, so and this is the way of the distribution in the, uh, and, and also the, to describe the different licenses also at the level of the, the, the data set. Okay, so, and at the end, the exploitation through the portal website and, and services. So, the, for exploitation, we, we, we have created a waiting function that uses the, the ontology and also the incoming and oncoming outgoing links from, uh, from, the, from the notes in the ontology that, and we use also from, from the data that we have in the sparkling point, also a string similarity in order to rank. So if you start writing the name of, a, of, a, of an author, so immediately the first one will be the, the, the most famous one or the, with more uh, books and, and works in, in the Spanish National Library. So for instance, if I start with Lope, so in that case, uh, there is a big difference between the first one, which is Lope de Vega, which is a famous writer, and the second one is also Lope de Rueda, which is an, uh, another one. Okay. So, so, so now the results of the, of, of the so, so you can see here the, the volumetry. So in total, we have four, as I mentioned before, 4.5 4, 4 million records of authority, bi biographics. We have this number of triples, more than 1 million links with BF, Sudoc, the German National Library Libraries, the Wikipedia, the French National Library, and also with Geolink data. Geolink data is a link data uh, application based on the geographical Domain. Okay, how can we use the library linked metadata or the library link linked data? I, sorry, I forgot to translate. So the, the, the first one is to validate and, 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 and enrich 
uh, registry uh, that are in March 21 records in other Spanish national in, in other Spanish libraries that are, that are part of the long tail of, of libraries. Okay, so this is this is one of the, the uses because we have uh, metadata curated. I mean, all this metadata which is curated in the Spanish national library can be helped, can be used for for, for enriching other 20 mark 21 records in other libraries. So so this is an example of the long tail which is a, a specialized forum for rare editions. So you can see uh, one famous uh, Spanish singer from the south uh, singing flamenco and these kind of things. And, uh, and there you can see that, uh, that the person wrote, okay, just looking at the Spanish National Library, I, I found uh, works from this person that I didn't, I didn't know. Uh, we also found newspapers that are also pointing to, to some information from the Spanish National Library metadata. Uh, another use is something related with citizen science. Um, uh, in that particular case, we, we built a prototype of an application named a Street Detective. And uh, the goal was to improve data quality and access to cultural data in, 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 in a particular city. So what we did was to build an application that have uh, the Zaragoza map on the back and, uh, and also uh, we have the Spanish National Library portal and uh, Oscar Corcho, one of the, 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 uh, the vice director of the group, I mean, he, he made a challenge with, ch with kids and children and, uh, and then by using games, I mean, the children between 10 and 15 years old, they were just linking are, are, uh, based on some questions, they were linking the streets with the authors of the Spanish National Library. Okay, so, so in order to have information on the map uh, linked with the, with, with the Spanish National Library. And, uh, and Oscar Corcho got a Fujitsu Prize uh, this year just because of this application. So imagine now, just based on this application, we can build a more complex case where we can integrate cultural data and geographical data. And this is the, the, uh, a neighborhood in Madrid where many of the streets have an, uh, names of famous Spanish writer, writers. So, so I could get information about this neighborhood just going into Wikipedia. Uh, I could get uh, information about this museum uh, just going into Wikipedia. But if I search in the Spanish National Library about Museo Lope de Vega, immediately I could retrieve some books about that. Or the same for Ateneo de Madrid with pictures, images, and so on and so forth. Or for the author of Lope de Vega, or the same for the street of Cervantes. So in that case, I would navigate instead of using wiki uh, web pages using the web of, of data. The same if I want El Quixote Road, uh, this is the road in, uh, in, in, in Google Maps, but if I search by Ruta Don Quixote, which is the Spanish translation, I would get several books about, that tell me about, about the route. And, uh, and if I want to search locations related with El Quixote, in that case, I have El Toboso over, over here, and I have Alcázar de San Juan, so I could get information about that, or, uh, I made a mistake with the animation, or I, if I, I could search by Toboso Don Quixote and Toboso Dulcinea, and then I would retrieve information about books writing about El Toboso, but under a particular context, which is Don Quixote or Dulcinea. I can also, based on the metadata, just from the metadata in images, to retrieve some full text in the, in the from the National Library because the, the, some PDFs are available. Okay? So which one is the message to take home? That a library in data can be easily integrated in, in other, uh, with, with other data in different type of applications. So tourism, geography, uh, education are the, 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 the first one to, to explore. Uh, data providers should include language, provenance, and license metadata in their data sets, not only in the March 21 
records that of course you do but also when you generate into the 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 rdf and finally it's important to say that the benefits of adding language provenance and license metadata in the data set reduce the time and cost of identifying the language in resources and, and terminology and allows you to point to to other terminologies it also it also fosters the aggregation and enrichment of data across complementary domains you you have already seen some examples it also enhances the data curation because you can assess your data against other data and to see if you are providing the same information and also improve the precision and, and recall in information retrieval and, and search so thank you very much and i'm available for for any questions that you already have